Tournament match. This one also one fall, 15 minute time limit. Introducing a 212 pounds nightmare number one. And on the right of your screen, at 232 pounds from Memphis, Tennessee, the King Jerry Lawler. One fall, 15 minute time limit. Referee Jerry Calhoun. Woogie, we're about ready to go with the second of the first round matches for the TV vacated TV title, Dave. Lawler, Lawler's got to be a favorite, although I will say that nightmare number one, while giving away a little weight, brother, he is some kind of rough. He is indeed. Boy, he has been rough and tough against all opponents, uh, he along with his partner, nightmare number two. Oh! Back on the ropes. And the referee is warning him about that. Jerry Lawler complaining about uh, being shoved down, and the Nightmare said, hey. Hooked his leg and yeah. dumped him is what he did. He said we were on the ropes and wanted a break. That's why he did it again. Hooked that leg back behind Lawler's left leg and just shoved him back to the mat. Back onto the rope. Dumps the right there to the mat a couple of times. And again. Now the nightmare. The claims that Lawler well, pulled his mask. That's the way he was getting him off his feet. Just a little turnabout being fair play right there, uh, Dave. Exactly what it amounts to. Center of the ring. Lawler fired into the rope. Both of them going. Right there set. Presses Lawler to the mat. Count of one, two. Lawler. He really fired him up in the air, didn't Boy, he? Boy, huh? he sure did. He broke that up at the count of two without any trouble whatsoever. Now the Nightmare wants a conference with the referee. He's talking to the crowd. He said, you saw it, you saw it. And they say, what? They say, who cares? <laughs> he didn't know anything would pull my mask. That's the only thing he knows how to say. <laughs> a nightmare being one of the first time I was just looking at Lawler and of course this guy is nobody to take lightly this nightmare Lawler really uh, very intense in this bout oh beauty put him down hard but Lawler is sustaining part of the damage there Maybe he drove his nose into that mat as he uh, put the brakes on oh. running a bulldog on him great he is, he'll get his brains knocked out that way. Trying to hold on again. Lawler jumps him into the rope. Suplex. And the Nightmare rolling on the mat now. Lawler picks him up. There's the right hand. Nightmare takes the opportunity to get out of the ring. There he is, down on the floor. Now looking to the crowd for sympathy and finding none. There is Lawler, just waiting on the Nightmare as he's bouncing around the uh, outside of the ring. Now back up on the apron, through the ropes. Three minutes, 50 seconds. So we're coming up on the four-minute mark of this tournament match. First round action in the tournament to decide the new championship wrestling TV champion. Nightmare number one with the headlock on Lawler. Four and a half minutes gone. Let's go! Let's go! 
nightmare. Oh, pound it on Lawler. Ooh, back in the corner. Nightmare with that right fist, worn by the referee. First neck breaker, Lawler out of that one. Out of one, he's able to kick out. Kicked out, but he didn't throw him off as he did in that first time in there. So the nightmare having a little effect on the king. Mm. Upper arm, a cover by the nightmare. Out of one again. Lawler nailed by nightmare number one. And again. in kind, he backs the Nightmare under the ropes, whips him across the ring, upper arm, Nightmare hits the mat, Lawler backs up, going with the smash, Nightmare was gone, Lawler in the air, body slam, Nightmare goes for the ropes, Lawler rolled out of the way, five minutes, 45 seconds, into the action, Oh, Lawler with the arm. Hitting nothing as a nightmare had moved. Lawler hooks him down. Small package. One, One two, three. three. Oh, the rest of the first family hits the ring. The entire first family holding Jerry Lawler. Here comes Dundee. He grabs Hart. He turns to Gibson. Dutch Mantell. And the first family now gone except for the dream machine. Green machine still there. Dundee telling the king about the box that Jimmy Hart brought in here. With whatever's in there, Green bails out of the ring. Lawler out of there after him. Oh. It's molasses. More feathers. Oh, come on, Jay! Hey, that's enough of that now. Get, get him out of here. Come on, Calhoun. Get him. Oh, oh Billy. Go. Oh, there's no excuse for that. Now, that's enough of that. Get for bringing all this junk out here. All I'm done is find $500 for you. Yeah, I hope maybe it'll cut out some of this stuff. Come on. Just get out of here, Green. Will you just take your mess and get on out of here? If you've got any stinking guts in your body, Lala! Let's just go to a break and forget all about the thing. Yeah, take a break. Here we are. Well, officially, the uh, the winner of the match, boy, with the confusion there, Lawler did win it. He got the three count, uh, six minutes, four seconds, the official time, so Lawler will advance in the uh, tournament. Yeah. All right, Tarred Mike feathers. Ford drew feathers on it. Mm hmm. Yeah, that makes Gibson and Lawler, uh, if we can get around all uh, the mess that came out. Uh, Eddie Marlin stopping that stuff, boy, he popped a fine and, and uh, right. I don't care what anybody else thinks. He popped it rightly. He got the first family. He got Lawler and Dundee and, and, and everybody. And, uh, well, 
Anyhow, listen, I, uh, I want to tell you about a, uh, a, a match that um, had a lot of intensity. And boy, I tell you, this feeling between the first family and a lot of the other guys is really growing, growing, growing. I think you will see some of it displayed in a bout that took place between the superstar and Steve Kern going against the nightmares with Vice President Golden Boy Chick Donovan at ringside down there. Watch what happened. Tag, nightmare number one. Golden Boy Chick Donovan horsing around over there as the, as the nightmare distracting the referee. Kern out of the corner and now back in action, Dundee way up in the air on the backdrop and the nightmare covers him two and Billy is out. for the corner, right through the legs of the Nightmare Tag on Steve Kern. Boy, look at his Kern go. Bill got over there, made a great tag. He needed it. Abdominal stretch and a beauty. Look at the way Kern has that leg hook. That's going to be it. Well, wait a minute. Dundee in. Knocked the other Nightmare down. The referee runs him out. Nightmare number two, head butts. Kern from behind. Two, and Dundee pulls him off. Nightmare number one, pops Kern in. Couple of almost, Kern almost had a great one on the abdominal stretch. Look at Kern, beautiful move. But the other nightmare breaks it up. And Kern slips in, sleeper hold. Dundee trying to keep the other nightmare out of the way. Donovan as the referee's running Dundee out. Uh-oh. Donovan in the ring. Dundee and Kern got the nightmares out, and they're ripping Donovan's clothes off. The referee stopped it, I believe. He's going to disqualify Kern, who's got a temper that flares on him. You can see the cast on Donovan's leg. Here comes Bugsy McGraw with a crutch of Donovan. He nails Dundee and, Don and Kern. The Nightmares and Bugsy McGraw Working on Kern and Dundee. Donovan slamming Kern now that he's been hurt by McGraw. Here comes the Gibsons. And out go McGraw and the Nightmares. They're kicking Donovan all over the place. Donovan caught in the ring and now he rolls out. Tell you, it was wild at William. <laughs> It's no surprise that uh, Dutch Mantel certainly has no love lost for Tojo Yamamoto. No. They ended up in a bout. You got to take a look at the highlights of. Let's look at it. the ladder after the stick. He pulls it loose and Dutch has got it. Dutch has got the fighting stick. Dutch says, you want to try climbing up the pole and getting the bull whip and Tojo saying, whoa, whoa. Now here he goes over there. Dutch letting him go. Oh boy. 
Heath Bag and Tojo into this one. Yamamoto trying to skinny up that thing, but he's not having it. Uh oh, Dutch getting ready to go for a home run. Safuchi. The bell has been sounded. And Dutch, and there's Anita going after the bullwhip. He's got it while Dutch is working on Tojo. Now back after Fucci. Onita with that whip. I don't know whether he knows how to die. He didn't get a chance to use it. Safuchi, Onita, and now Yamamoto tell him to hold him down. Three minutes and 49 seconds. The winner is Yamamoto, or is uh, Dutch Mantel. Uh, Yamamoto stabbing Dutch with the end of that stick. <laughs> They've got Dutch's whip around his neck. Onita and Fuji holding him. The end of the fighting stick has been shattered. Referee. Jane. Jane. Referee. Trying to get him apart. jamming away. Crowd hollering. Somebody must be coming to help Dutch. Here comes superstar Steve Kern. Onita being held by Dundee and Kern working on him. Tojo back up in the ladder the face. Oh, he's mashing him. And Yamamoto with a final shot from Steve Kern. Sends Yamamoto out on the floor. It turned into Pier 6, but then uh, there was no doubt when you had that bull whip and fighting stick, man, Both it was not going to yeah, be uh, a scientific wrestling no. match for a fight. What a brawl. We've got more of it coming up here in just a moment. We're going to see Anita and Fuji going against the Gibsons right after this. <laughs> Hiroshima, Masafuchi, their manager Tojo Yamamoto, and going against them from Pensacola, Florida, 454 pounds total weight, the Gibson brothers, Rick and Robert. This match one fall, 15 minute time limit, Jerry Calhoun is the referee. Okie dog, Dave, we're about ready to do it in there, as Robert Gibson will be starting, obviously, Rick outside, and on this side of the ring, uh, the championship belts handed out as well as the flag of the rising sun uh, going to be deposited over with Tojo along with a fighting stick. We're about ready for the action as the referee trying to get one of the Japanese representatives out of the ring. They are the Southern Tag Champs. Mr. Onita starts out against Robert Gibson. Gibson leading to referee Jerry Calhoun. Uh, Fucci was a long way from the corner where he was supposed to be with a hand on the turnbuckle. Onita backs Robert Gibson onto the ropes. Referee is there, calls for a break. Robert Gibson steps quickly out to the center of the ring. Headlock by Robert Gibson. Onita, puts him into the ropes, shoulder butt by Robert coming off. 
Hubbard jumps over it. Oh, reverses. Rodita tried to set himself, roll it down. But Robert reversed it on him, goes for the side headlock, and that's where Mr. Onita is at the moment. Pucci steps in there, no tag. Robert gives a head searches on him. Drop both of them to the mat. And Brother Rick from out on the apron. Adds a kick as Mr. Onita was walking past the area over there. Onita back through the ropes now into the ring. Masafuchi steps up onto the apron. There is a tag, and here is Masafuchi. Minute and a half into the action. Robert Gibson back to the corner, and here comes Brother Rick. First official look at Rick in the match. He grabs Fuchi's left arm. Fancy footwork from Rick Gibson. Boy, he's a guy that can do it, too, Dave. Masafuchi, unhappy about something. He said something to the referee. Rick Gibson just yanked him off his feet down to the mat. Yeah, there are arm drags, and then there are arm drags. <laughs> and, man, he slammed him onto that mat with that one. That's one of the better ones you'll see. Rick over to the corner, makes a tag. Here's Robert Gibson coming back in. Robert back down to the rope. Japanese wrestler fired him into the ropes, but Robert was set. He came off of there. Down to the mat goes Fuji. And Robert Gibson with uh, a bar on the arm. Just a little side note, I noticed Anita started through the ropes and immediately across the ring, uh, Rick Gibson started. And uh, he always has an eye. They have an eye on each other. That's why the Gibsons work so well together. Robert Gibson puts Mr. Onita flat on his back in the center of the ring. He's got a headlock on him. Shoulders were not down in pin position, but uh, Robert in control nonetheless. Whoop, Japanese have Robert over in, in their corner. We are now at the three minute mark. Three minutes gone in this match. A little hair pulling looks like by Mr. Onita. Robert Gibson into the ropes. Whoa, he knocked the Japanese down, but he was knocked through the ropes, down onto the floor. Onita is down in the ring. There's Robert Gibson. He went through the ropes. Boy, they hit hard. Robert bounced back, falling through the rope. Look out, Tojo with a fighting stick right across the back. Rick had come flying over and kept Fucci from jumping down on Robert. And as the referee is running, oh! Dutch apparently saw on a monitor Yamamoto uh, slamming away at him, and uh, he came roaring out. Dutch is staying in their corner, by the way. Yeah. Robert Gibson having his hair pulled being worked on by both of the Japanese. Fuchi stays in the ring. Robert in the air. Ooh, power slam. Fuji with a chop, jab, over to the corner. Tag on Onita. Onita up on the middle rope. Drops down with a chop across the forehead. Robert Gibson really being worked on by both of this Japanese team. We are at the five minute mark. Five minutes gone. Fuji. Oh, Robert trying to get over to the tag on Brother Rick. Could not make it. She grabbed him, drop kicks him. Yeah. 
Japanese team working very close together now on Gibson. They've got Robert away from his corner, trying to keep him away from the tag on Brother Rick. And they're double teaming him. Robert into the ropes. Double chop by Fuji. We are very close to the six minute mark. Six minutes gone. Mr. Onita with a foot high in the air. Neil Robert Gibson with it. Follows with the chops. Back on the rope. Fires Robert across the ring. Robert ducks under his drop kicks and puts him on the mat. Onita. Uchi. Team to keep Robert from the tag on Rick Gibson. So Robert has to stay in here. Robert over to the corner. Here comes Rick. Six and a half minutes gone. And the action continues. Drop kick by Rick puts Fuji on the mat. Reversal by Fuji. Rick rolls it down. Gojo, oh, he got him right in the head with that fight stick. Yamamoto. Beating up Tojo Yamamoto over here by the table. Match is over. Disqualification on Tojo when he nailed Rick with that uh, stick. The referee was right there. Dutch Mantel puts Fuji down on the mat. He goes to work on him in the ring. Watch Tojo. Look out. Tojo's got the he's, handcuffs. He's got those handcuffs that Dutch brought in. Oh. And had over here on the table. Fuji using the fighting stick on the Gibson brothers while Tojo is handcuffing Dutch Mantel. He's got him handcuffed to the bottom rope. Now Tojo takes the fighting stick. Steve Kern on Fuji. Dundee, Dundee was thrown out of the ring by Onita. He comes around again. Oh, look out, Onita and Fuji out of the ring. They grab the tag team belt. Here comes Tojo. Onita back to pick up the fight and stick. And they're on their way out of the uh, Yeah, there it is. Jerry Calhoun uh, looking for a key to the handcuffs. Yeah, the key to the handcuffs. As Yamamoto picked him up, went in there, put him around Dutch's arm, put him to the rope. Got that fighting stick and just beat the stew out of Dutch with it. Boy, I am telling you what. Dutch Mantel, he nailed Dutch with those handcuffs right in the back of the head, right at the neck. Bill Dundee and Steve Kern came in there and uh, they had their hands full before they finally got it going with the Gibsons, Kern, and Dundee to get it under control. And all the time, Tojo was uh, beating away yeah. on Mantel. And Dutch had been put into nighty night land with those handcuffs when he hit him in the back of the neck with them. And uh, handcuffed to the rope down there. They're trying to get the uh, stretcher that uh, was here at ringside out. 
Now they're helping Dutch out on floor. What a shellacking he took down. He never had a chance. He was in there trying to help out with the uh, Gibsons on it, and uh, he had Fuji down, I believe it was, and, and uh, Yamamoto had grabbed the handcuffs off the desk here, went flying back up there, and glommed him right in the back of the neck with it. And they're taking Dutch out on it. Uh, Dutch was just really in here to help the Gibsons out, That's too. All, yeah. Because when Tojo got involved and slammed Robert with that stick, Dutch uh, got sick of that, came roaring in, and uh, got after Tojo on it. He was standing in the corner trying to mm, keep it right. Okay, well, the official winner, uh, the Gibsons, the Gibsons uh, with right. the interference with Tojo with that stick from the outside, and we're going to take time out. We'll be back in a moment. 2.15 was the time. 2.15. Two minutes, 15 seconds. The official win is going to go to the team of McGraw and the Dream Machine. And, of course, again, as so often happens, an able assist with what... Look, look, Jimmy. I'll talk to you later on. I said I'll talk to you later on, Jimmy. We'll just get this down. Come on, get out of here, man. Talk to me now. Will you just take it on back there with McGraw and that? And be sure and take your walking stick with you. Say, Everybody man. saw you using the thing except the referee. Uh, was you're with blind like everybody else. I didn't do anything because I don't have to do anything. Here, throw me my sunglasses out here. Thank you, my man. I appreciate that. You know, I've been making a lot of observations lately. Oh, big deal. No, no, I have. You know I have, man, because you know what? It's just like E.F. Hutton, baby. When Jimmy Hart talks, everybody listens. You understand that? Yeah, I can see them all listening. Well, you know, like I said, I've, I've been uh, I've been doing a lot of thinking lately, making a lot of observations, and you know, there's a man right here now that I think is world class championship material. Oh, Super. I know the first family's got who is it, Bugsy or no, the Dream no. Machine or one of the nightmares no. in there that you're so proud of? No, Buzzard Breath, it's not. Let me tell you who it is, man. It's somebody that you can't even believe, but this man is definitely world championship material, and I hate to see him waste his life away with the people that he's hanging around. And the man's name is Steve Kern. Steve Kern is the... Yes, yeah, sir. You're saying that? I'm saying that I've been watching Steve Kern now for about five or six weeks. And I'm telling you, the man has got championship material. With the misery that he's inflicted on your first family, you're well, talking about Steve Kern? Well, let me just say you this. you got something up your sleeve. We have something in common, Steve Kern and Jimmy Hart, baby. And it is that I hate Orientals. And I know Steve Kern hates Orientals because I know that he loves and respects his father very, very much. Just like I love and respect my father very, very much. And I know also that Steve Kern's father was a prisoner of war in Vietnam. That's it true. was in all the papers, we, you know it, and I know it too. No point so like I said that. before, there is no love lost between Jimmy Hart and the Orientals, and I know how Steve Kern feels about them. And so, to make a long story short, what I'm trying to say right now is this, is that uh, there's an opening position right now in the first family professional wrestling. And I'm telling you right now, Steve Kern, if you're listening to me, that's right, laugh, Russell, go ahead, laugh, be a smart aleck and laugh. I'm saying right now, Steve Kern, if you're listening in the back, there's a position waiting for you, baby, because I like your action. And with Jimmy Hart by your side, you can be a world champion. You can be everything that you're not now. You're trying to invite Steve Kern into the... You know what? I I really think in that in that brain of yours that you are dead well, serious in there. That, But listen, you know what I really think is behind the whole thing? Oh, what's that? And that is simply because Tojo Yamamoto has <laughs> champion. Oh, God, Jimmy God. Hart doesn't have the Southern Tech. Let me tell Who's you something, you guys baby. Don't Who have... won the belts for him? Uh, if I hadn't have been out here, they wouldn't have won the belts because Nola left Dundee. Left you're in the afraid Randy that fool. Yamamoto has oh, outdone you the in the wrestling th business listen, and you're trying yeah, to figure right. some way the to get a guy thing, to hurt Well, baby, the only thing holding him up is his very close veins on Tojo Yamamoto. He's going to have a heart attack in the ring and Jimmy Hart will be long here after he's dead and gone. I think you're and scared. You I think you're afraid I'm not scared of anything or anybody and you know it and get that smart grin off your face because Gordon Sully's going to take your job over. How you like yeah, that, Scoot yeah, Jerk? Well, but I'm saying it right now. you about Tojo taking yours over. Well, what I'm saying is Steve Kerr right now, baby, that's what I'm saying. There's a position in the first family. You shut your big... That's a, oh, shut up. Take that baby out of here with you. Get that kid out of here. I'm sick of you. Get her out of here, man. Just get out of here. I hate freeloaders. No, I'm not going to be 
joking. All right. Am I joking now? Am I serious now, brother? Am I Steve Kearns, now? Steve Kearns, his own man. You he does his own talk, and nobody man, tells right. him anything. Right. And I know talent when I see yeah. talent. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I know the kind of talent you're looking for. This guy says there's an opening in the first family. He's had his eye, he thinks, your championship material, and he, because the fact that he doesn't like Orientals and the unfortunate experience that your father had in there, uh, he, he thinks you got a lot in common, Steve. Well, first of all, Lance, Jimmy Hart's right about one thing. My dad was a prisoner of war in Vietnam for seven and a half years. Maybe that's what a tribute to not liking the Orientals. But you know something, Hart? You're promising me an awful lot by making me the world champion. And that's something that I've always wanted. Everybody knows that. But that's something that every professional should want. But you know, there's something else my dad taught me. He says that you've got to be able to trust a man before you can put yourself Amen. in his hand. Amen. Not the most trustworthy soul I ever saw. Well, let me just say something right now. I think this speaks for itself. I could have kicked Chick Donovan out in the cold, cripple a gimp, but who stood by him? Jimmy Hart. So I think that has to speak for something right there, baby. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what. Always think. I'm out here giving you a chance of a lifetime, Kern. Look at you. You're with Dundee. Dundee has gone through 50 partners a year, man. He's washed up. You're not like him. You know that. You've got everything going. You have got youth. You have got charisma. And that's what the first family lives on, baby. It's magic. And Jimmy Hart is magic. And Jimmy Hart can make you, brother. And that's the deal. Watch it up the sleeve. <laughs> well, you know, like I said, my dad taught me to be able to trust a man. Now, if I'm going to be able to trust a man, you know, you just got your leg out of a cast not mm -hmm. too long ago. Right. It's probably still pretty weak. That's right. Probably could be injured real easily, right? There's no doubt about it. Well, I'll tell you what. In order for me to trust you, you're going to have to trust me. So I'm going to make you a deal. I'm going to get you in the ring. I'd like you to get up in the ring. And I'd like you to let me place you anywhere in the ring that I can place you. And then I'll climb up that top rope and I'll let your leg lay right across that bottom rope. And you'll be looking up at me that whole time and you'll be wondering, is there a slightest doubt in my mind? And if you'll let me get up there, I'll make either one or two decisions when I climb up there. I'll either come down and I'll re-break your leg right here on television or else Now, now there's another part of it. This is where your trust has to come into my hands. 